Ever since Galileo discovered that Jupiter had moons, astronomers realized that you could use Jupiter and its moons as a very precise clock in the sky. So here's the solar system, there's the sun, there's the Earth, here's Jupiter, and here is Jupiter's innermost moon, Io. Now, it was known that Io takes precisely 42 and a half hours to orbit around Jupiter. So if, from the Earth, you see Io emerge from behind Jupiter at, say, midnight on a Tuesday, then you know that it should re-emerge again at half past six on Thursday afternoon. Beautiful. Now, one of the men charged with making precise tables of exactly when Io should be seen to emerge from behind Jupiter was the Danish astronomer Ole Roma. But he noticed something surprising. See, depending on the time of year, Io emerged later than expected or earlier than expected. Now, Roma's genius was to realise that had nothing to do at all with the orbit of Io around Jupiter. It was to do with the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. See, what Roma noticed was that when the Earth was in a position in its orbit so that it was close to Jupiter, then Io emerged earlier than it was expected to. Then, as the year passed and Earth moved around the Sun and got further away from Jupiter, Roma noticed that Io then emerged later than it was expected to. And Roma realised that it takes time for light to travel from Jupiter to the Earth. So when the Earth is far away from Jupiter, it takes longer for the light to travel, and therefore you see Io emerge from behind Jupiter later than you would expect. Then, when the distance is small, it takes less time for the light to travel, and you see Io emerge earlier than you might expect. So Roma had discovered that light doesn't travel instantaneously. It moves through space with a finite speed. This remarkable insight led to a measurement of the speed of light. We now know that light travels at precisely 299,792,458 metres per second. That means that in the time it takes for me to click my fingers, light has travelled around the Earth seven times, or that it travels 10 million million kilometres in one year. And that's the yardstick we use to measure the universe, because 10 million million kilometres is approximately one light year. The speed of light is the speed limit of the universe, built into the very fabric of space and time itself. But because light travels at a finite speed, a light year isn't just a measure of distance, it's also a measure of time. The further away an object is, the further back in time we see it. <laughs> 